What's going on, guys? Tower number nine here, and today we are going to be discussing uh, the pre-release season that just finished up. Or I say season, but it's really just a week or so of pre-release. And uh, yeah, you know that was a lot of fun. And uh, let's get into it. So I was playing in the Star Wars Unlimited pre-release events in my area. There were several different stores running events. I think I ultimately went to four different stores, and I was going to. Um, I was going to one event each day during the pre-release week. So I actually ended up going to seven events. And my overall record in those pre-releases was I went uh, five and two for event wins. So there were five events where I went undefeated. I think four of those were uh, were 3-0 and one of those was 4-0. Um, and then the in the remaining two events, we went two and one. So that was a... Um, that was a 5-2 event record and a match record of 20 and 2. And um I don't I didn't keep track of the specific game record. Uh I think two of the events were best of ones, two of the, uh and the other five were best of threes. And I will say that I definitely lost some games uh even in even in the ones where I went undefeated in terms of matches. I'm not sure there was a single event. Um I'm not sure there was a single best of three event, even the ones where I was overall victorious, where I went, uh, you know, where I didn't drop a single game. Um, so that's, uh, you know, in the best of ones, uh, I think I was victorious in one or both the best of ones. So in those, I didn't drop a game, but kind of a different thing. Um, so that was a that was a pretty successful record in terms of wins. But maybe more importantly than uh, maybe more important than the wins, you know, I had a really good time just playing in the events, and the cards that people were pulling looked really cool. You know, I'm probably going to make a video about this uh, in particular, but I think there have been some people who have been very critical of this game's art. And to tell you the truth, my view was that uh, the game looks really good. Um, especially the hyperspace cards. The hyperspace cards in particular are really cool looking. Almost any card in hyperspace looks good. Even cards that I think are bad in the game, I was like, oh man, this looks so cool. And in general, I think that's going to be a popular option with players. Um, so the the cards looked really good. People were having a fun time opening them, making decks. You know, there's that element of exploration where you don't really know what your pool is going to be, and you have to try to figure out what the best way to play the specific cards that you opened was. And it it overall creates a really cool uh, a really cool fun environment, to be honest. And I actually ended up going to more of these than I thought. You know, I think I had originally planned to go to like two or three of them. And they were so fun that I just kept uh, kept going to more until I ended up going to one on uh, every day of the pre-release week. So, you know, I think that's a positive sign for the game. And I personally really enjoyed the pre-release experience and am now going to be looking to put some decks together and uh, get some things set up for uh, other formats and for weekly play, which is also starting up in several of the local stores. So yeah, overall, it was a really good time. One other thing that I'll say is sometimes you get people that claim that Sealed is all luck. Um, I do think Sealed has more luck than other formats. Uh, you know, it might be the case that the card pool that you get is a lot worse than the card pool that somebody else gets. That That is just possible. You know, maybe maybe someone else has, you know, two overwhelming barrages and legendary Vader and three resupplies and the two super laser techs or something crazy and is playing some really strong, uh, some really strong deck for the format. But you know what? That can happen. But most of the time it doesn't. You know, most of the time, uh, most of the time, the power level of the decks seems of of the pools seems at least broadly similar, and there may be cool things that you have that your opponents don't have. You know, one other thing I'll say is I didn't really feel like I had any like super dream. Oh, this pool is insane! It can't be beaten. You know, I have all that ramp and the and huge bombs and like just answers for every stage of the game. Tons of removal. I never felt like I had a deck that was in that category. To be honest with you. And despite that, I still had a very strong overall record. Additionally, if the format were all luck, I don't know. I mean, like I said, my match record was 20 and 2. That's a 90% win rate. Um, a 90% win rate is not likely in a format that's all luck. Um, you know, it is what it is. 
Uh, I will say that I think that there these events had players from a wide range of skill levels. So, you know, on the one hand, you might have the guy who's never played this game before in his never played the game before in his entire life. And he's there because a friend of his was going to go to the event and was like, hey, you want to come along? This game is cool. Um, or you might have, you know, at one of the events, I had a game. It was actually quite a close game. I think my opponent came pretty close to winning. Um, but it was a um, it was an opponent who mostly played Pokemon and had heard the store was doing this event and was like, yeah, I'll check this out. Star Wars is cool. You know, that type of thing. And yeah, you know, that's just... Uh, there, there's a big range, you know, you have the people like that on one end and, you know, then you have, maybe you move over and it's like someone who has played the demos, you know, they played at Gen Con, they played at the Roadshow, they, they've played like, you know, maybe two or three games, they know the basic rules and concepts, but they're not all that familiar. Then maybe you have someone that's like, oh, you know, I've been following along for some time, I'm kind of familiar with the card pool. And, you know, I've played, you know, I've played some games, uh, I've played some games with friends uh, one way or another before the thing actually started. And then you have some people who are like, I mean, I don't know, you know, I, I've been making content for this game for months. I have, uh, I, you know, I was at the Fantasy Flight community celebration. I've already even, you know, I'd already even opened a bunch of packs and played sealed games and stuff like that uh, before, before the event. So my level of experience was a lot higher than some people. Um, and one thing that I really liked about the events that I was at is that it didn't seem like the more experienced people were like lording it over others. You know what I mean? It wasn't like an elitist community. It wasn't a community where people were really, um, it wasn't a community where people were being really harsh. Instead, it was something where some of the people who had more experience or knowledge were helping other people build their decks and were providing suggestions. And in general, the overall attitude of play was pretty friendly, pretty casual, and overall, I thought, um, a lot of fun, you know? So overall, I would give the, uh, the pre-release events two big thumbs up. And uh, actually, I enjoyed them so much that I'll probably be going to a bunch of them when set two comes out. Uh, and additionally, I actually think that I enjoyed them so much and ended up getting enough packs from them that I may actually get fewer uh, fewer packs in like boost in like booster boxes or whatever and more packs in pre-release in the future or other uh, other limited formats because I had ordered you know I had ordered two booster boxes and a I had ordered two booster boxes and a two player starter and I was like okay you know that's going to be my basic stuff and then I'll add to that with some you know maybe some limited events maybe some you know limited events maybe I get some prize packs maybe I you know do some do do some singles that type of stuff use that to fill out the collection and honestly i found you know i mean i played in i played in seven pre-releases so that's you know seven pre-releases six packs per event that's 42 packs plus there's the prize packs that's already like you know we're probably looking at like two boxes or more worth of packs just from all the pre-release events um and you know at that point uh you know maybe i'm going to be maybe in future sets I might order fewer packs directly and play in more events to uh, get those packs because I found it was a super fun way to engage with the game and uh, kind of explore the set, open up those packs, see see each card, see those really cool hyperspace versions, and uh, yeah, you know, overall, I would I, I would say a very positive experience, very positive experience, and yeah, I um. In a way, I'm kind of sad that it's over. You know, I I, I am excited to get to uh, to get to play draft and to get to play constructed and the other things that people are going to be doing in those weekly plays. But the pre-releases were a really fun time. And um, you know, if you, if you went to pre-releases yourself, I hope you had a good time too. You know, feel free to uh, feel free to discuss in the comments what your uh, pre-release experiences were like. And if you didn't go to the pre-releases and are interested in the game, I would honestly really suggest uh, checking some of them out when uh, sets two, set three come along. Uh, I, I would say, hey, you know, check out those check out those pre-releases because I, for one, found it a really fun way to be uh, to be jumping into the game. All right, that's going to do it for this one, guys. We'll be back later with some more Star Wars Unlimited content, including some openings that are uh, that are coming up soon. And yeah, I will uh, I will catch you guys later. Thanks for watching.